Volvo 850 series stage 0 series video number something something today we're going to have a look at the boost control the boost control solenoid going to the turbo and the boost control leads you have and the different fittings on the turbo uh, where you would expect usually to have an air leak and what can cause you to get a loss in boost so let's zoom out the correct way and get started so the 850 comes with this boost control solenoid looks like this it is located on the air filter box housing actually quite this pipe comes from the air filter box and it's located right around here and in this general area you'll have to picture a air filter box I have it but I won't show it to you because yeah if you don't know where where the air filter is perhaps you should start with uh, another video than this so on the boost control solenoid you have uh, three colors painted on on here they are very faded but to put it like this the connector if we say that this is up from now the most top connection is yellow on the turbo you will find that the yellow one is the wastegate actuator spring so let's take our cables they are also conveniently marked with yellow and so on and connect yellow to the top of the turbo and on the boost control solenoid so here we now have the first part of the equation next comes the red next it doesn't come next but next comes the blue one the blue one goes into the middle and the blue one actually the only purpose of the blue one is to push excess air back uh, after the airflow meter so the blue one actually goes into here no I can't fit it here because I have this yeah this is no I would say it's truly stuck but no it wasn't so where are we now yes we are in a mess I think but anyways from the top yellow top one where the connector is goes to the wastegate actuator blue one goes into the air intake just after the filter and airflow meter and finally we have the red one the red one is the last one so this is very simple but the final tricky part is on the turbo we have two connections left we have one underneath the air intake where this pipe would go and one at the actual uh, original air dump so this red one actually goes on the compressor here so now this is our finished product and the way this works is the when you build boost on the compressor side the boosted air or pressurized air will go through here into the boost control solenoid and it will then depending on uh, if it's actuating or not it will dump air back here into this intake pipe so the boost boosted air will go straight from the compressor here and I have seen I have I know of one case where this had broken been factory replaced and this hole here had not been drilled open when you get this from the factory some of these don't have these holes drilled open on this little bung here so uh, and that causes then that all this pressurized air gets stuck here and then in turn travels to the wastegate and the way this wastegate actuator opens the wastegate at times like this you think you should have planned ahead before making a video and starting babbling but 
the information is there, you just have to decipher, decipher it. So, that was a little bit of extra inform information. So, if you're having boost issues and this pipe seems fairly new, you can actually remove this and check that you actually have a, the, the air flows clearly through here. So, when you floor it and you start building pressure, and the pressure goes into the goes into the magnetic valve, post control solenoid, call it what you want. The air then goes into the to the wastegate actuator or not, depending on what the, the engine management is, is telling your, your turbo to do. But in effect what will happen is if we look at the turbo housing here, this valve will open and when it opens the air coming from the exhaust manifold will go straight through and into the exhaust. It will not go through the exhaust compressor. And this in turn means that this is this uh, energy will dissipate and not uh, make any power as such. It will just go straight through the exhaust. But when it's closed, all the air will be forced through this turbine. It will spin up the compressor, creating more boost. And when the engine management sees that now I have sufficient boost, the boost is calculated from the airflow meter and the cal uh, the amount of fuel spread into the engine, so that's a calculated factor. On a T5 it sees I have 0 0.6 bars, this is enough, maximum boost. Then this will open and the exhaust gases will flow through here and not through the turbine and the boost will drop, so then you will basically... You have probably seen this on your car if you're flooring it, that the boost will come up to the maximum level, then it will start hovering very so slightly around this uh, set set value in the en engine management so there this will then be opening and closing and regulating the boost and without this your turbo will basically be spinning away because more air would be compressed into the engine and would go through the turbine and basically you would produce boost until your engine blows up so this little thing here quite uh, quite a nifty thing then the final thing left here is the dump on the boost. Here I have not connected anything, but from here there goes a little uh, hose and it goes to the front side of the engine on the intake. You can see actually near the near the photo body on the front side you can see that there are two bungs on the on the intake manifold where this hose goes and basically when your when uh, when your car is not producing any boost and it's actually on a negative boost so or under under pressure that's probably a word so when it's uh, on, on at negative pressure this will create a suction to this dump and it will cre uh, allow the pressurized air that is usually coming up here and into the intercooler piping will actually allow this air then to circulate back in here and remain within the turbo for a while so that this is actually a recirculating uh, dump I get the strange feeling that it's not called dump all over all over the world, but 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 uh, fitting an aftermarket dump on uh, an 850 is a bad idea because usually these vent the air uh, into the atmosphere, so you get the nice choo choo sound that everybody seems to love. But here, the internal mechanism is that the air goes inside and through the turbo. Tell you what. Uh, Give me a second and let's open up and, and look at the internals. Okay, so I found my 10 millimeter. Time to open up the dump. And why not remove this boost, this cable from here because... Uh, 
And by the way, when this turbo is installed on the car, what I just did in under five seconds is a huge pain because these bolts here are located in the worst possible place and some people sell a replacement lid you can put on here but that's that's a bad idea because you need a dump so the pressurized air normally comes out of the compressor but there is a passage here and this dump actually will on when your car is producing neg negative boost under pressure it will this will be sucked in and then this will open this passage here and the air will flow back and into the comp compressor and recycle again so the air will basically be going around around coming out here going back in here and be circulating cir circulating forever and that's uh, basically what allows your your car to to run on a negative pressure because the air here is circulating it's not really throw pulling too much air through the air filter only what it needs basically to sustain operation and when again your car goes on boost this then will this membrane here will be pushed forward and then locking this hole tight forcing all of the air out of the turbo into the intercooler pipings in the cooler and then the intake manifold and into the top where suck squeeze bang happens and you usually smile a bit so putting the the aftermarket plate here that basically seals off this entire area is is a bad idea because this this system works well it's uh, reliable i don't see any reason to to put anything else there unless you want the the sound of some tweeting birds when you hit the throttle now this membrane here this rubber membrane this if something is going to fail here it is this if this gets a hole that means that you're constantly recirculating here you might actually hear some twittering bird sounds when uh, jumping off the throttle that's usually it's hard to describe but if you get the feeling that are there some small birds trapped under my hood then this might be your the cause of that there are for those who want there are stiffer springs to keep uh, to push even more push even more air into the engine for these dumps but um, I have not heard of a case where these would have been uh, gone bad since this is the cold side of the turbo and it doesn't really experience too much and that's basically how the dump works and this is important that it's connected to the intake manifold if it's not connected to the intake manifold you will have a loss of total boost I when mine was this why this uh, hose was broken actually in the middle I experienced a loss, loss of boost of 0 0.2 bars and in an 850R producing 0 0.9 bars from the factory or 0 0.85 to be precise this uh, this then caused me to produce 0 0.6 bars more or less which is at uh, T5 power levels so I was losing a, a fair bit of power and the, the spool up wasn't as fast as I, it could have been since it was recirculating the air inside the turbo and not pushing all the air, air, air into the engine. These by the way are 10 millimeter bolts usually if you're going to do something on your Volvo you need a 10 millimeter you will find the 10 millimeters all over the place in every imaginable place the throttle body is actually one of the few places where you can have these 6 millimeter bolts which is quite quite interesting oh good I didn't want to have threads there anyway so now I don't have them well if anybody is interested in buying a fucked up 16T 
<laughs> That's the price of this video. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. <laughs> See you next time. So, false alarm, the threads were fine and I was able to put this turbo back to bed there. So, one final thing. These leads are from the factory brittle. They will fail because now they are 20 year old rubble, they become very brittle and they will break. So, uh, a good stage zero thing would actually be to replace all of these they are about five six millimeters internal diameter that's like one mile uh, for you who live in burma and uh, another place a common place of failure where you have a boost leak is in the connector that goes to the throttle body this you should check also for air leaks and then on this small rubber that goes to the turbo this also is prone to breaking. This is not uh, the factory one, as you can see. I have replaced mine because mine developed some cracks and started leaking air. And then, of course, to and from the intercooler, you have two rubber hose. These are the most common places for air leaks. And then there are, of course, in this pipe going to the turbo, there are a few places that can leak. This uh, plastic here sometimes will break because of heat. So check it to see it's intact. Here, around this, you can have uh, air leaks. And here, you have uh, the warming sensor and the connector for the crank ventilation. For the crank ventilation, it goes here. You have a warmed connector here. So here is also a place where you can have uh, some air leaks. One way to test for air leaks is to have the car idle engine just spray start starting spray around the engine and see when the engine revs up. Uh, I have seen another and I have also in myself in the past used uh, brake cleaner since that's also a combustible gas or liquid and it will cause the, the engine revs to go up. Um, spraying a flammable gas on the hot, hot turbo side is perhaps not recommended. So. Thank you. If you want to subscribe, I will try to make more videos as time goes by. Thank you. Bye.